OK, so we're going to look at a neat way of writing the equation of a straight line in the complex plane. If we first of all just think about the Cartesian plane, or xy plane, the most common way of writing the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient of your line and c is its y-intercept. But unfortunately this format doesn't quite capture every possible line, so if you have a vertical line, the gradient would be infinite and it might not necessarily have a y-intercept. So this is why we sometimes use this more general format, ax plus by equals c, where here c is a different constant, it's not necessarily the y-intercept. But this format, ax plus by equals c, captures every possible line in the xy plane, including vertical lines. So if we want to generalise this to the complex plane, we can think of the equation ax plus by equals c as essentially telling us if your x and y satisfy this equation, then the point with coordinates x, y lies on the line. And we can think of our x coordinate as effectively being the real part of a complex number, and the y coordinate as being the imaginary part of a complex number. So if you want to know that a complex number, let's call it z, lies on our line, we can check does a times the real part of z plus b times the imaginary part of z, is this equal to c or not? And this will tell us whether or not our z, this complex number, lies on our line. So now there's a nice way of expressing the real and imaginary parts of a complex number z in terms of its complex conjugate. So if we say that z is equal to x plus i times y, then its complex conjugate is just x minus i times y, where x and y here are both real. So then if we add these two together and divide by 2, you'll see that we get x on its own. So if we do z plus its conjugate and divide by 2, the i times y terms cancel, we get 2x divided by 2, and we just get x. And similarly, if we were to do z minus its conjugate, then the x terms would cancel, and if we divide by 2, we would end up with i times y. So if we want to get y on its own, we need to first of all multiply by i, then we'd have negative y, so we'd need to multiply by negative 1 as well. So if we have negative i times z minus its conjugate divided by 2, this gives us y on its own. So we can now replace our x and y, or our real and imaginary parts of z, by each of these expressions to give us a slightly different format now for our equation of a straight line. So we have a times the real part is a times z plus its conjugate divided by 2, and then we've got plus b times negative i, so minus b times i times z minus its conjugate, all divided by 2, and this needs to be equal to c for our point z to lie on this line. And now we'll rewrite this in a slightly different way, just by first of all multiplying out and then collecting some like terms. So we've got a over 2 times z first of all, then we've also got plus a over 2 times z bar, the conjugate of z, from our first fraction. Then we have minus bi over 2 times z, and finally plus bi over 2 times z bar, the conjugate. And all of this is still equal to c. So now if we collect together our z terms, we've got a over 2 minus bi over 2. So we can write this as a minus bi over 2 times z. Then for our z bar terms, we've got a over 2 plus bi over 2 times z bar. So we'll write this as a plus bi over 2 times z bar. This is equal to c. And at this point, you might notice we've got a plus bi over 2. We've got a minus bi over 2. So these two are complex conjugates of each other. So if we actually introduce a new variable, let's say we call this w a plus bi over 2, so that a minus bi over 2 is just the complex conjugate of w, then we can actually rewrite this whole equation then as just w bar times z plus w times z bar is equal to c. And now if we think about what possible values w can take, well originally a and b were just allowed to be any real numbers. And if w is a plus bi over 2, we can get any possible complex number just by changing the values of a and b. So here, actually, w is just any complex number, and we still need our constant c to be real. And this is going to, just like how ax plus by equals c captured every possible straight line in the Cartesian plane, this equation now for w, a complex number, and for c, a real number, 
is going to capture every possible line in the complex plane. And now we'll finish by trying to interpret this complex number w geometrically. So it's going to help to go back and forth between our complex equation and our original Cartesian equation here, because remember our a and b have actually been preserved here, and they've become part of our complex number w there. So if we take two points which lie on our line, let's call them z1 is x1 plus i times y1, and we've got another distinct point on our line, z2 is x2 plus i times y2. If we want to find the corresponding points in the Cartesian plane which would lie on our line, then we just have x1, y1, and x2, y2. So returning to our original equation, these points would have to satisfy a x1 plus b times y1 equals c, and similarly we would need a x2 plus b times y2 equal to c. Then if we subtract both sides of this second equation from the first, we'll get a times x1 minus x2 plus b times y1 minus y2 is now equal to zero. And we can actually recognize some structure here that this looks like the dot product between two different vectors in 2D. So we can think of this as being the dot product of a, b and the vector x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2. So the dot product of these two vectors is zero, which means that these two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So how does this help us interpret our w geometrically? Well, we can think of this a, b vector as corresponding to the complex number a plus b times i. So we know that this is going to be perpendicular to the corresponding complex number would be x1 minus x2 plus i times y1 minus y2. So we know that a plus bi is perpendicular to this vector. And w was just a plus bi divided by 2. So if this is perpendicular, dividing it by 2 doesn't change the direction. So actually we know then that w is going to be perpendicular to this vector. But what does this vector have to do with our line in the complex plane? Well, if we were to do z1 minus z2, so let's just return here to our complex picture, z1 minus z2, we would get x1 minus x2 plus i times y1 minus y2. So this is actually just z1 minus z2. And if we just draw a little picture, we can interpret what z1 minus z2 gives us geometrically. So if you imagine we've got z2 here, and we've got z1 here, and we've got our line which passes through these two points. So we chose these as just two generic points which lie on our line. Now the complex number z1 minus z2, this corresponds to the vector going from z2 to z1 which is actually going in the direction of our line. And this will be true whatever we choose for our z1 and z2. If they both lie on this line and they're distinct, then this z1 minus z2 is going to be going in the direction of our line. So then we can conclude that this a plus bi over 2, or our w, is perpendicular to actually just the direction vector of our line. So it's going to be perpendicular to our line. So we've got this really neat looking equation for a straight line in the complex plane, where now we understand that this complex number w is actually going to be perpendicular to our line if we think of w as being the vector going from origin to w.